Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 11th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. I hope everyone was able to get out last night and enjoy the northern lights. Here's a view of them out over Lake Ontario. I have a vague memory of seeing auroras when I was a kid, but I don't really remember much about it and this was certainly a lot more spectacular. It's been a really interesting season, first with the total solar eclipse and now with the northern lights. Kim and I started out the morning a little later than usual because uh, we had to sleep in a little bit after staying up late to see the auroras, but we started at the Lakeview Church Trail where we hiked it from north to south. It was moderately birdy with a total of 37 species including 9 species of warblers. When we got to the south end of the trail we continued on to the Beatty Point Trail where someone had reported an orange crowned warbler yesterday and we did not find that but we did have a nice look at this cedar waxwing. We had 28 species from BD Point. We headed over to Braddock Bay Park to start the hawk watch around 8 a.m. because the weather was mostly sunny and there was a decent southerly wind, so I thought maybe raptors would be moving early, but really we didn't see any activity until after the regular start time of 9 a.m., it was mostly sunny with just a high thin layer of clouds and moderate southerly winds and then as the day went on those winds shifted more to a northeast which is an unfavorable wind and it continued to get thicker cloud cover and eventually some rain clouds moved in and shut the flight down and we ended the count a little bit early because of that rain. As soon as we arrived these two sandhill cranes took off from one of the fields in the park and flew around while calling. At one point we had a group of five male bobolinks down in the grass behind the hawk watch platform. A couple of eastern kingbirds put on a nice show in front of the hawk watch platform, hovering low to the grass, catching insects, and you can see on this one its outer tail feather is growing in. Here we have a large white wading bird with a long yellow bill. This is a great egret, and there was a group of six of them that actually migrated through together. Here's a hawk that caused a lot of commotion as it was flying across the marsh with all the red-winged blackbirds giving their alarm calls. Here it perched and on the breast we see brown teardrop streaking. This is typical plumage for a juvenile cooper's hawk. Here's a side angle of the same bird and notice that from the side it looks like the streaking goes really far down which is sometimes a field mark for American goshawks so just be aware of that. But we see that this bird has a relatively plain back rather than the more mottled back that American goshawk would show. And one interesting thing about the tail is that it looks like there's at least one new tail feather growing in this one here that's a little bit more gray. Here we have a large blue and gray wading bird with long trailing legs and a really thick long bill. This is a great blue heron. Here we have a small songbird flying overhead that's completely yellow underneath including the undertail coverts and the actual tail itself and we see some reddish streaking to the upper breast. This is a yellow warbler. Here we have a somewhat large raptor with pointed wings. We should be thinking large falcon and we only get one large falcon regularly which is the peregrine falcon and the dark barring underneath indicates that this is an adult. We were entertained for a while by a couple of guys flying their RC airplanes around and miraculously they didn't crash any of them unlike the poor guys last week who crashed their RC helicopter into a tree. Here we have a hawk with a long tail and long wings with rounded tips. We should be thinking Excipiter. This bird looks a little bit more compact overall with a more squared off tip to the tail because all of the tail feathers are the same length and a relatively small head. This is a sharp shinned hawk and the brown streaking here on the breast indicates it's a juvenile. Every year at the Hawk Watch we get the bird of the season and often this isn't a once a year bird or a once every couple years bird but a once every 10 years or once every 20 years species. In past years we've had things like white winged dove, last year it was the lark bunting which was right around the same date so we are eagerly awaiting what would be this year's bird of the season. Well today we finally found out. Kim and I were on the platform and we had just noticed that our friend Greg was walking up when I spotted this. Here we have a medium sized heron with a blue head, neck and upper breast, white belly, sort of a two-toned appearance to the wing with a white leading edge and darker trailing edge. This is a tri-colored heron. 
Tricolored herons are mostly a coastal heron of the southeastern U.S. and very rare up in this area. I took a look at eBird for the previous reports of tricolored herons in Monroe County. The most recent was from 2011 from the West Spit. Before that was 1998 at Round Pond. Before that was almost exactly 10 years earlier, only one day off on May 2nd, 1988 at the same Round Pond location. There's a record from 1981 at Buck Pond and another from Buck Pond in 1976. Taking a look at the eBird map for tricolored heron sightings for this year, we see a lot of sightings up along the coast, and then there's some scattered sightings up in our region of the U.S. and Canada as well, and you can see this pin near Rochester is today's sighting. And if we zoom out a bit more, it's really interesting. You have all these sightings along the coast, and then you get the ones that end up here along the Great Lakes, and they had to fly over all this area in between, but somehow they move through without anyone spotting them. So needless to say, we were very thrilled to see this bird and it gave us a fantastic view and it will probably end up being the rarest bird that we see this season, although we're still coming into mid-May so you never know what could turn up. Here we have a large raptor that's mostly brown underneath. We see a large head and bill and a lot of splotchy white, especially here in the wing pit area. This is a bald eagle that was born last year and we can see it's beginning to molt some of its inner primary feathers. Here we have a small dark falcon with dark streaking underneath and some white bands to the tail. This is a merlin, and on this bird we can see that it's starting to get some blue feathers on top, which is an indication of a male. At the Hawkwatch today we had 69 species. After the Hawkwatch, Kim and I stopped at the Braddock Bay West Spit and had 19 species, including our target, which was the ruddy turnstone, which a few people have been seeing recently on the barrier island. Altogether, today we had a total of 88 species. I had two new species for the season today, which were tricolored heron and ruddy turnstone. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 84 turkey vultures, 9 bald eagles, 2 northern harriers, 9 sharp shinned hawks, 1 cooper's hawk, 9 broad winged hawks, 6 red tailed hawks, 2 merlins, and 1 peregrine falcon, for a total of 123 migrating raptors. That brings the May total to 6,742 and the season total to 59,345. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, cloudy skies early and then partly cloudy with a high in the upper 50s and light north-northwesterly winds, I would expect light to moderate migration. For Monday, we're looking at morning showers and isolated thunderstorms with a high in the low 70s, winds southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So that's a good wind direction, in fact our best wind direction. Hopefully it's strong enough to hold off a lake breeze. Usually we like the winds to be at least 12 or 13 miles per hour, so we'll hope that it's on the stronger end. And the other concern would just be how rainy and gloomy is it going to be. Um, a lot of the species we're seeing this time of year are things like broad-winged hawks and bald eagles and turkey vultures, which prefer things to be not so gloomy. Uh, we're sort of winding down on things like sharp-shinned hawks, which will sometimes push through on the less favorable conditions. So we'll keep an eye on Monday. That's possible that that could be a decent day. And for Tuesday, we're looking at light rain early and then cloudy with showers with a high in the mid-60s. Winds south-southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So it's a southerly wind, but very light. And again, with the temperatures getting warm, the lake breeze may kick in at some point and the gloomy conditions may hold back the flight. So we'll keep an eye on that day as well. All right, the fun continues. Getting to stay out late last night watching the northern lights and still being able to get up early to do some morning birding on a beautiful sunny morning. Then having decent winds at the Hawk Watch, the flight never really picked up though. The winds shifted, clouds moved in, and then we ended up getting the bird of the season with that tri-colored heron. Plus we had some RC planes to entertain us in the meantime, and then rushing out to the West Pit afterwards to pick up the ruddy turnstone as well. Another good day of birding. And I hope to see you out soon in the field or up on the platform. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.